All right, so today is an exciting day. I just got a new desk. <laughs> All right, so this is the top. Let's do the rest. And here we are exactly one month later. Let's go ahead and tour this desk. Ah, it's awesome. For my desk, I have the Jarvis desk by Foley. Now I actually reached out to Foley and I'm super surprised that they said yes, but I'm glad that they did. <laughs> but anyway, take that as you may, all opinions will be my own, but I just wanna honestly say I love this desk. It's, it's awesome. So for the top and frame of my desk, I just went with white. It's a white frame and a white matte top. The corners of the desks are nice and rounded, but the top here is just nice and smooth. It's not like smooth as glass on top, but it is a nice smooth matte material. But they have other varieties that I looked at, such as bamboo and wood and whiteboard. I just went with the simple matte white. The desk comes in at roughly around four or $500, depending on the size that you get. For my size, I went with the 30 by 60. I really like the size of it because it's nice and wide. My workspace area is about this big. I can have overhang items such as notebooks or pens or a water bottle just off to the side and it's just out of my workspace. But we haven't even gotten to the exciting part. This is a fully automated sit-stand desk. So what that means is instead of cranking it up and down, you would go ahead and press a button and it goes up and goes down for you. It's nice. If I got a crank one, I would either always keep it up or always keep it down because it would just get super annoying to put it up and down all the time. So this desk in that regard has been awesome. You've got four buttons, you got your standard up and down, you have one, two, three, and four. Those are programmable memory ones. So for one, I have that as my normal standing position. For number two, I have that as my normal sitting position. For number three, I have an anti-fatigue mat that I can stand on every now and then, and I just need to raise it up a tiny bit. And then finally for number four, I have a little sister, so if I need to raise it down all the way to her, there you go. Now I went with the programmable switches, but you can just have the standard up and down, and that works just as well too. And then finally with this desk, they sent out a cable management kit, which, mm. <laughs> as someone who has never had good cable management, oh, this is just like a breath of life to a room. It's amazing. But underneath the desk, I've got two surge protectors. One just hangs out in the cable box, and the other one, I actually bought uh, Velcro strips, and I connected it to the top and bottom of the desk, so. I can pull that on or off if I want to. One of the surge protectors has a really long cable, so that will run down the leg of the desk. So that's the only visible cable that you notice in my desk setup. And I call that a major accomplishment. But what fully sent me is these uh, cable management boxes that just hide all the cables. Obviously you could use just cable ties or duct tape or whatever. Over to the left right there, I've got a power grommet. You might not need that. I personally do because I need to make sure that my camera battery is always charging and I just having it that at a quick glance and not like underneath the table or something. That's just really helpful. But if you don't want the power grommet, it comes with a hole anyway, and that just helps with cable management. That's what I've done over there. But to me, they hide the cables in a nice way and I like it. But anyway, there you have it. That is the Jarvis Desk by Foley. Thanks to them for sending this out to me. I've loved using it for the last month and I looked at the other competition and it just seemed like the best one out there and it was fairly good priced. So if you wanna check it out, link will be in the description down below as will all the links to everything that I have on this desk. But let's talk about everything else now. All right, so let's just go from left to right. So first off, the lamp. So this lamp was sent to me by Foley as well, but you can choose any lamp you want. It's a very nice lamp. The thing I really like about it is having color temperature changes. Of course, if you wanna get like a Philips Hue and put that into like a normal desk lamp, you can go ahead and do that. But for myself, it's nice and simple, looks elegant, and it just adds another source of light throughout the day as you're staring at a screen. So it's another nice, touch. Over to the right of this, I got a journal that I like to write on every now and then. I also have some scriptures on top of that that I like to read. I'm Christian, I'm going on a mission soon, so I like to study these pretty regularly now. But yeah, those are just some personal stuff. Moving on. So now we have these hard drives. So I've got an 8 terabyte hard drive and a 4 terabyte hard drive. Uh, the 8 terabyte here is generally used for pictures that my family takes. Uh, We've actually got that halfway filled up, so we take a lot of pictures in our family. But for the other four terabyte head drive, those are my projects that I'm working on, those are the videos I've worked on, and yeah, that's where I keep stuff in storage or where I keep backups or other stuff like that. That's my main hard drive. They're both made by Seagate. Uh, I don't know. I like their brand. They're, I think they're the cheapest on the Amazon actually, but they haven't failed me yet, so I'll call that a win. <laughs> now for my main keyboard, I like to use just the standard Apple keyboard. Um, I don't know. It's got a nice typing experience. It's nice and shallow and I've just gotten used to it. And then for my mouse, I like to use the Logitech MX Master 2S. Thank you, Daniel, my brother, who gave me this for Christmas. 
it's awesome. I used to use the Apple mouse, which is a killer on ergonomics. I, my hand got cramped during the day, so it was terrible. So I actually switched from the Apple mouse to a different mouse that had buttons on two sides. It was like this really old Dell mouse and it had better ergonomics than the Apple mouse, but it was a terrible mouse overall. So this was a massive upgrade. It's got two buttons on the side. I just used those for going left and right. And then it's also got a horizontal scroll wheel. I like using that when I'm editing videos. And then, I don't know, just nice and clicky. And then for your scrolling here, you have this little addictive thing. So if you scroll down hard enough on this, it just starts scrolling infinitely, or you can just press this button and then it scrolls infinitely. But there you have it. That is, that's the MX Master 2S, uh, my mini review on it. It's, I haven't had too many problems with it. The number one problem that I am seeing from it is Bluetooth connectivity. I might just have to contact Logitech about that and see if there's anything because it seems to cancel out every now and then. It really only seems to cancel out when I'm doing something that it, like bogs up my computer. So it might just be a computer issue, but there is that issue that I've noticed that I haven't noticed with other mice. But yeah, those are my main peripherals. We'll get into my headphones in just a second, but let's get to the main computer. So I actually made a video on this a long time ago, two years ago, in fact, but this is the first computer that I personally ever bought. I believe I've got this actually in 2015, but this is the late 2013 iMac. It is the 21.5 inch display. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's running an Intel Iris Pro. For the hard drive, I'm running a one terabyte 5400 RPM hard drive. So as you can imagine, in today's world, it's the hard drive's pretty bad. I probably should have gone for the Fusion drive when I was buying it, but it works. Overall though, this computer still is very nice. This is where I do literally all my work. I program on it. I do video editing on it. So it, I, I put this thing through the paces and it's still coming out on top. And for my first computer, yes, I could have built a Hackintosh and I realize that nowadays and I probably will in the future, but it's a nice computer. It served my purpose as well. I don't plan on upgrading anytime soon. It's still a good computer. Now, as for applications that I use on a daily basis, I use Sketch to map out my iOS application. If you haven't used Sketch, oh, it's so nice. It adds so much to your workflow in terms of UI design, you get just, it's much better than writing it out on a piece of paper like I was doing before. Pixelmator is another photo editing program of choice. It's an alternative to Photoshop. It doesn't do many things, but I, I use it to edit all of my thumbnails and it's working good. I used to use Adobe products, but now that they've come out with a monthly subscription service, I've just dodged them all together and looked for alternatives. So I now edit all of my videos on Final Cut Pro nowadays. For music listening, I am a YouTube Red subscriber, which means there's no ads and stuff on YouTube, but also you get Google Play Music. So I use Radiant Player, which is an open source application that puts an app onto your desktop which uses Google Play Music. And as for music, I listen to a lot of uh, instrumentals throughout the day, so like relaxing film scores, John Williams stuff. Every now and then I'll listen to something like Hamilton, which is fantastic if you haven't listened to it, or I listen to The Greatest Showman. That was pretty good, I don't know. It doesn't have the same storytelling as Hamilton, but again, it's like part of the whole movie, so anyway. <laughs> I use Brackets, which is an open source application for any web development that I need to do if I'm doing Node.js, I can also use it for that, but I rarely dabble in that, so there's probably a better application out there. I've looked into Atom, but it just seems like a little bit too complicated for what I like. So Brackets is nice and simple. And then of course, Xcode. Uh, no explaining there. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I have on my computer, and that is the computer I use. Now, let's continue on. Off to the right here, I use a Focusrite Scarlet. This is going to be for both my microphone up here. I need to plug this in using auxiliary cables and that go into my computer. And also I use it for a DAC that runs to my headphones right here. You can control gain. You can directly monitor what's going on inside of your microphone. It provides a lot of power to your headphones so you can hear a lot of dynamic range when you're listening to music. So it's very nice. And as for my headphones of choice, I use the AKG K7XX. Now, these headphones have been put through the paces, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but the cables I've had to resolder multiple times and I've burned the, melted the plastic around it, of course. So yeah, they, they've been put through their paces, but they sound fantastic still. So uh, I don't plan on getting rid of them anytime soon. If you haven't used a pair of open back headphones and want to experience your music in a completely new way, it's got a lot of dynamic range. You can hear where the instruments are when you're listening to the music. Uh, it's probably perfect for gaming, although I never game, so. But these are the AKG case of an XX. They're really, they're really wide and you can hear people calling you if people are calling you. It's it. I can hear myself snapping. It doesn't block any of the sound, so 
yeah. Then off to the right here, I have a Google Home Mini. So this is also my bedroom. So what I like to do is I have an alarm going off every morning at 6 a.m. So that's what I use for my alarm. But also if I want to play music that's outside of my headphones, I can play it on this. Speaker's good enough, uh, definitely needs more bass. That's the only thing that I say about it. But of course, if you want more bass, you can always upgrade to the Google Home. So, or the Google Home Max. That, that would also <laughs> would work very well. Something that re very recently came, I don't know if you guys played this game, but Age of Empires. Uh, this was a very classic kid game of mine. I played it for days on end, honestly. <laughs> this and StarCraft were my childhood games. So I actually, uh, on Twitter, I won a little giveaway that gave me their original sign track. I already ported this over to iTunes here, so I listen to that every now and then. But hey, it's a nice little decoration to go on the desk. Then almost last year, we've got a Hydro Flask. I got it because it's my blue color. I really like it a lot. Um, I don't know. It just keeps water cold. It's a nice flask. And then finally for the microphone here, I have the Blue Spark. It's a pretty good budget high-end microphone. Like it uses auxiliary cables, so it captures a lot more dynamic range in your voice, uh, but it is on the lower end compared to other auxiliary microphones. But it's, I think it's perfectly fine with what I do. And then finally, uh, the last thing we should talk about is probably this Topo mat that I have down here. So this is of course the, the anti-fatigue mat that I was talking about earlier. It's really nice. Uh, it, it's just a nice simple gray thing. I've got carpet floors so it slides in and out easily if I want to use it. I like it. For my chair, and I've been using this for the last two years, keep in mind, it's been a folding chair, a metal folding chair. <laughs> See, so what I like to do is stand most of the time. It keeps me engaged in my work and I just like standing a lot. But on those off days that I do need to sit and just be like bundled up in a blanket, I've got that thing. And that thing just is tucked away in a corner. It works. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it works. But yeah, there you have it. That is my desk drawer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love looking at people's desks and seeing the tools that they use. So I hope you guys found enjoyment in looking at the stuff I use. And I also want to say thank you because none of this stuff would be here if it wasn't for the massive support that I've seen on YouTube, in the community, on Twitter, and with my own application. I have over 600 beta testers on my application. I mean, that's just incredible. <laughs> and also for those 600 and so or so beta testers, keep an eye out. We'll, we'll be sending out betas soon for our new version that's coming out. But also, I just want to end this off with my previous desk. Let's go get it. There it is, is my previous desk. So this folding table right here was my desk for two years. It worked okay, but obviously it was bad. <laughs> and I said this before, I love standing while I'm working. So you wanna know how I made a standing desk? That's exactly what I did for two years. Thinking of it now, it's really stupid. I had my computer, everything that you see on there, I had on top of here. So what I have to do is if I ever wanted to sit one day, I'd have to use my whole body and take it down. <laughs> but this is legitimately what I worked on for two years. But yeah, this is kind of going to be the mission statement for Architap 2018, to work harder to work harder towards the goals that you wanna get in life. If you wanna build your own game, take the steps necessary to get to that place. First, learn how to build a scene. Next, you need to learn how to add a sprite onto that scene and so on and so forth until you make your game. I do wanna say for those who are working on applications who have applications out there, I'm bringing back app of the day. So take that as you may. Leave your apps in the comments below. Leave your apps in the comments below. But anyway, that's it. Have an amazing day, everyone. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.